Hello everyone, it's Mr. Wolf here, and in this video, I'm gonna be introducing the digestive system, all right, how it works and interacts with other body systems for us to essentially get the food, the nutrients, the energy that we need to survive. Uh, before watching this, you should have watched my intro video and the Curse Gazette video, and, and both of those talk about this really important concept of surface area to volume ratio, all right, and the idea that big organisms wanna maximize their surface area as much as possible in order to exchange nutrients and get rid of waste. Uh, a great example, and we've already learned about this, is the lungs, right? So instead of just having this giant lung right here where just gas exchange just happens at the surface outside of the lung, instead we have these alveoli, right, where they kind of branch out. And so gas exchange happens in this little balloon and this little balloon and this little balloon and so on and so forth. And so you have the surface area of an entire tennis court just in your lungs and your upper chest. All right. Uh, so let's look at the digestive system though. So this is, should be on page nine where you can follow along. And we're just going to start with when you eat food, what happens? All right. Well, first you were going to have your mouth here is going to start to chew and break down the food. We've learned that you, we have some enzymes in there to break down, uh, carbohydrates. All right. From our uh, first semester unit. And then it's going to go down your esophagus. All right. This is essentially the tube that carries down food. All right. It actually has muscle that goes like this to kind of bring down food. If you've ever taken too much of a big bite and then eventually the food kind of goes down, that's because your esophagus is going like this. The specific term for that is called peristalsis. All right. Uh, so your esophagus carries down the food. All right. And then it goes into your stomach. All right. And in your stomach, you have acid that helps break down the food even more. You also have enzymes that help break down the food. All right. And then the stomach itself churns. All right. It has muscle on the, the churns to help break down that food as well. Mix it up. All right. Uh, now, other organs that are kind of part of your digestive system that we're not going to talk a ton about, but we're going to definitely get to um, in this unit at some point is your liver, which is right here, and your pancreas, which is right here. All right. Again, involved in digestion, but we're not going to get into them just yet today. All right. So then from your stomach, the food is going to go. And by the way, at this point, it's called chyme. All right. Is the specific name of it. And it's so whenever you throw up, usually, usually you're throwing up chyme, the stuff that's in your stomach. Um, but then once it uh, is in your stomach and gets broken down enough, it's going to go into your small intestine, all right? So the job of the stomach is just to help break it down further. The small intestine where the, the food is going to get continued to, it's going to continue to be broken down. So that's job number one of the small intestine. Job number two is now the monomers, those single units that have been broken down are going to get absorbed into the bloodstream, all right? And that's why your small intestine is so long and fold it up. If you stretch it up, I think it's about 30 feet. It would stretch 20 or 30 feet. You got to Google it. I forget, I forget off the top of my head right now, but it would stretch really long because it gives your body, all right, plenty of time to absorb the food as it's going down the assembly line of your small intestine. So by the time your food is done in your small intestine, it's not really food anymore because you've absorbed almost all the nutrients, all right, which what's left is some dead cells, dead bacteria cells, some stuff you can't digest like fiber, all right, and now you need to get it out of the body. The problem is, is when it's in the small, at the end of the small intestine, it's like just kind of this liquid mush, all right? And your body doesn't want to get rid of all that water, right? Uh, so the food goes into your large intestine. And so the food will actually start here in your large intestine, will kind of go up here, all right, across and then back down and then out of the rectum. And that's where feces exits the body. But anyways, let's go back to the large intestine. What does that do? It, it reabsorbs water back into your bloodstream. So that's why feces, poop, is kind of solid because the large intestine absorbs it, all right? What happens when the large intestine isn't really working well? Like if you're sick, you might have diarrhea, all right? And that just means that your large intestine just didn't do the best job at absorbing that water, all right, out of um, the, the food or the, just whatever's in that, that large intestine at that point from what you've eaten. All right. So that's the path food takes in your body. And what I want to focus on now is zooming into the large intestine because that's where the food actually goes from your digestive system and then gets transferred into your circulatory system. So your bloodstream, so it can travel to the, all the rest of the body. All right. Now, if we were to zoom into your small intestines where this exchange is happening, all right, uh, there's these really cool specific structures that allow it to happen even better. All right, and a good analogy before we actually look at those structures is imagine you're cleaning up a spill with paper towel versus an actual towel, right? Which would you rather clean up a spill with? And it should be uh, the towel because it, it, it'll, uh, sorry, I'm just getting rid of this thing right here. It's saying to prep physics, doing bio right now. 
All right. Uh, the towel has almost like these tiny little like fibers or hairs, all right? What that does is it maximizes the surface area. It maximizes the surface that the towel can absorb that water. That's why it's so good at absorbing water or drying you off. <coughs> so this is an actual picture of a camera inside a small intestine. And what you can see is it kind of looks like, like a pinkish towel, right? Like these tiny little hairs. What are these called? There, there's actually a name for them. They're called villi. All right, the way I remember them is like the I, the L, the L, the I in villi actually kind of remind me of the actual kind of protrusions, the hairs that come out of the small intestine, all right? So these are all on the inside of your small intestine. So why do we have these again? It increases the surface area, all right, allowing for more absorption of glucose and other nutrients. So imagine that we had a small intestine where we didn't, where we didn't have those villi. Right, you could still have diffusion, right? So these arrows represent the glucose that be, that be, that could be going in from the intestine into the, your bloodstream, right here, and they could go across the surface, right here. By the way, the inside, the tubing of your small intestine, the specific name for it is just lumen, just a fancy word to say inside the small intestine. But now, instead of just having this flat surface, let's take that surface and kind of make it hilly, right? Those are the villi, each of those little hills, all right. And now we have so much more surface for glucose to go right from the inside of the small intestine, the lumen, into the bloodstream. All right, so that maximizes the the amount we could actually absorb. All right, we don't want any food to go to waste. All right, so this actually brings up an interesting um, uh, type of condition. It's called celiac disease. All right, and in a normal like if you don't have celiac disease, right here is an actual microscopic picture of your villi. All right. And with celiac disease, all right, if you have usually wheat-based products, things like gluten, all right, what it does is it actually reacts and causes your villi to kind of go down. All right. And if that happens, you're not going to be absorbing food as well. So by not eating that gluten, by not eating that wheat, all right, you're, the people with celiac disease, their, their villi stays healthy and they're still able to absorb uh, food a little bit better. But they have to make sure that they're avoiding those types of foods. All right. So let's look at... All right, let's zoom even more into what's happening in the digestive system from going from your small intestines into your bloodstream, all right? So you're gonna see something like this on page 10, although you're gonna only see the top part right here, all right? And that's fine, you could just model the top part. I decided to model the bottom and the top here just to give you a, a more holistic understanding of what's happening. And so let's get our, our bearing straight, all right? Right here, oh, I don't know why it says small intestine cells. Get rid of that right now. We don't need to worry about that. I'm just gonna... Da -da -da -da. All right, so here, like I said, the inside of your small intestine, that's right here, that's your lumen, all right? And then right here is my bloodstream, all right? My capillary, microscopic blood vessels. And another hint there is that I have these red blood cells right here, RBCs, all right? And then these are just intestine cells, all right? They're just in between the capillaries and then the inside of your intestine where your food is, all right? And then this is, come, this is the direction the food's traveling. This is coming from your stomach. And then this is gonna eventually go to your large intestine, also known as your colon. All right, so we have a, if we look here and make sure you draw this, a lot of glucose in your small intestine. Why would we have a lot of glucose? Because you eat food. There should be a lot of food in your small intestine. And it should be broken down at this point, right, by the enzymes and the acid, all the things that have made sure to break down your food where it's not in those chains anymore. And then your bloodstream has some glucose, but not a lot. So we have a high concentration of glucose in the intestines, low concentration in the bloodstream, so what happens with diffusion? Which way do things like to go? Always, always from a high concentration to a low concentration. So glucose is just gonna naturally diffuse past the intestine cells. They could go through the cell membranes of the intestine cell pretty easily. And they're gonna just uh, go into the capillary. We have a, uh, a low concentration of glucose. All right. And so that is how at the microscopic level our, our bodies are able to absorb glucose into our bloodstream, how we're able to get that energy. All right. Now, this isn't really a digestive system, but I wanted to talk about just a few other organs just so we have an idea of, of how they work in our body. So this is going to be your, these are going to be your kidneys. So uh, they look like kidney beans or kidney beans look like kidneys. All right. They're actually more towards the back, kind of lower part of your back. And their job is to filter blood and waste, um, which eventually becomes urine. So the kidney's job is to filter blood and make urine. 
How does it do it? Here's a simplified model, all right? So blood's gonna go into your kidney, all right? And actually most of your blood goes into this other tube. It kind of leaves your blood vessels and goes to this other tube as part of your kidney. Some of your blood still just kind of stays in the bloodstream, all right? Uh, but you don't wanna get rid of all that blood, right? You, we wanna keep it, but there's some stuff in your blood that we wanna get rid of, all right? So what happens is your kidney's job is to kind of sort out and say like, okay, good stuff in the blood, we wanna bring back into the bloodstream and the stuff that we don't want in the body anymore, we're gonna filter out. And that's eventually gonna become urine. It's gonna head to your bladder, it's gonna be stored there. And then when there's enough, you gotta go, you gotta go. All right, and then the rest of that blood is gonna to return to your body. All right, some other organs, the brain, it's the head of the central nervous system, all right? Uh, it helps coordinate functions of just really so many different organ systems. And man, can we go into depth in the brain, but for where we're at in class right now, we're not going to go too much into it, but I wanted to make sure to talk about it. also muscles, protein fibers that contract and allow the organisms to move, right? Uh, they also line blood vessels and other organs to help, help things move around, right, as well. All right, and these are the notes on the digestive system. Thanks for watching, everyone.